coming up, two members of one of America's greatest rock bands were going through a caustic divorce while on tour. Uh, the palpable stress that affected the musicians, it became the inspiration for one of the band's greatest hits. It's actually become their signature rock song. It's one of the toughest songs for any singer to take on. It also has some baggage. Uh, has one of the cheesiest music videos ever put to film. Maybe the cheesiest. Even the band admits it. But this song just had a major pop culture renaissance 40 years after its peak. The story's coming up, including exclusive interviews on Professor of Rock. Hey, music junkies, Professor of Rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. You know, if you remember being uh, the television channel changer for your parents when you were growing up before we had remotes, you're gonna dig this channel of musical nostalgia. I remember doing that. Every day here, we have something special for you, a ride in a time machine, back to the soundtrack of your life. Make sure that you subscribe below right now, click the bell, uh, so you never miss out on our new interviews coming up. Click the bell, all, all that stuff. We also have a Patreon. You're going to find more content there. That helps us keep it a daily channel. Very important. So it's time for another edition of Number One in Our Hearts, where we break down a song that was so phenomenal, so superior. It should have been a number one hit on the Hot 100, but for reasons sometimes unknown came up short. Today, we're looking at a song that was the heaviest rock song from a legendary band that got close to the number one spot. Uh, it actually went to number eight, and it's since become a rock standard, played all the time. One of the most played songs uh, from one of America's greatest bands, Journey. The song absolutely moves the needle. It's loud, it's abrasive, in a good way, and it has shaken stadiums for decades now. And most don't realize the song is actually about divorce. Let me explain. A divorce, you know, is powerful content for a songwriter. It's one of the most emotionally traumatic events that a person can go through, especially for a rock and roller who is constantly uh, away from home on tour, playing hundreds of shows a year, city to city, city after city. Uh, throughout the rock era, there have been many divorces, among notable artists and songs written about those breakups. The both of us lived in. in his composition, I Feel Like a Bullet in the Gun of Robert Ford, a double A side hit for Elton John in 76, Bernie Taupin expressed the shame a person feels after breaking up a longtime relationship. I burst the bubble that both of us lived in, and I'm damned if I'll ever get rid of this guilt that I feel. And I'm damned if I'll ever get rid Toppin went even deeper, exclaiming that breaking up sometimes is like breaking the law. Breaking the law. And Bruce Springsteen compared a breakup to an amusement park ride that starts off innocent and fun, but can take unexpected twists and turns into a dark, empty place where two people eventually lose each other. Tunnel of Love, actually one of my favorite songs of all time, in my top three for sure. Neil Young wrote about the split between him and his wife, calling the differences between the couple the Great Divide. Of the great divide. You and I, we got caught down therein, the twisted canyons of the Great Divide. We walked the floor, now we don't go there anymore. Now we don't go there anymore. While on the road, actually on the escape tour, Steve Perry and Jonathan Cain the prolific duo that wrote most of the lyrics for Journey's Greatest Hits, they witnessed the anguish and frustrations that their bandmates, uh, Neil Sean and Ross Valerie, were going through while in the throes of uh, bitter and expensive divorces. The rigors of nonstop touring and temptations of the flesh took their toll on the respective marriages. Uh, but because of the demands thrust upon one of the world's most popular rock bands, they just had to forge ahead. Sean and Valerie had to forge ahead in spite of the heavy emotional pressure that was upon them. Uh, observing their bandmates under distress gave Kane and Perry an idea for a song. They sat down together in a hotel room with Jonathan's little Casio keyboard, and the basic structure for Separate Ways Worlds Apart evolved rather quickly. actually inspired their other song on there faithfully as well about being on the road. 
even though their buddies were going through hell, Steve and Jonathan examined the unfolding drama carefully. Surely there must be some kind of solace that could come out of all of this. Troubled times, sleepless nights. Caught between confusion and pain, pain, pain. Distant eyes, and perhaps the biggest culprit of a failed marriage, promises we made were in vain, in vain, in vain. Someday, love will find you, break those chains that bind you. One night, we'll remind you how we touched and went our separate ways. It was on that miniature Casio that Kane and Perry created an urgent synth line for the driving melody of Separate Ways. They presented the rough draft of the song to the rest of the band the following day at Soundcheck. You see, Journey was looking for one more song that would bolster their live set. The band fleshed out Separate Ways in a flash and produced a track that was just what they were looking for, a track that had real rock and roll urgency, but still had you know, rhythmic melody. Great song. Journey was so excited about Separate Ways, they decided to throw it in the set for that performance uh, that very night. Uh, even with Steve Perry mumbling his way through you know, the unfamiliar lyrics on stage, the audience reaction to Separate Ways Worlds Apart was phenomenal. They flipped out. They knew that they had a potential hit for their next record, one that would be a potential highlight of their live show with so many great songs already. They were very excited. Now, as we continue to break down this song, I do want to thank our sponsor, Clear. I'm telling you, Clear has been a game changer for me. Uh, their nasal spray has helped me breathe easier you know, as I've gotten into the habit of washing my nose, keeping me healthy, it's got me through sickness. And now I use Spry, their complete dental defense system to help my family. Uh, we use the entire line of products, including the new Enamel Max toothpaste, oral rinse, the mouthwash, a Spry gum, and mints. It's the best way to keep your mouth clean, incorporating xylitol throughout the day. As I've mentioned in the past, xylitol is a natural ingredient derived from plants and inhibits bacteria and viruses from sticking to teeth and tissue. Without the ability to adhere, uh, the germs are washed out of the body through the body's natural processes. It's really amazing. Click on the link below or up here in the info button to get Spry Gum or any other products in Spry Dental Defense System today. Make sure to leave a comment on Amazon. The recording of Separate Ways Worlds Apart, found on Frontiers, contains the big studio production of the Kane Perry melody spawned from that handy Casio keyboard. So cool that it came from that. Uh, on the recording, Jonathan Kane heavily enhanced the synth line with the Roland Jupiter 8, which was a coveted high-tech instrument back in the early 80s, for sure. Journey co-founder Neil Sean, of course, a master of melodic power chords, Best demonstrated on his guitar work four separate ways, really. Neil Sean has a gifted ability to create permeating melody with symphonic intensity and then go off on a blazing pentatonic run. On the music of Journey, he accomplished all of that musical versatility without ever overplaying. He gives the song exactly what it needs. There's a level of complexity in the way that Neil Sean hits a soulful, affecting tone in solo. As if the guitar was a personification of Neil's real life marital struggle. Essentially, Neil is you know, letting his guitar do the talking. He always does, with a smile half a mile long. And Steve Perry's vocal on this song, it just knocks you on your ass. Sorry, I had to say it. There's really no better way to say it. It's one of the best vocals ever put to record. It's fierce, it's fiery, it's ferocious. It's peak Steve Perry, and he does some things in this song that only a handful of singers have equaled in the history of pop music, especially at the end here. His vocal is a complete emotional breakdown through song. He leaves nothing to chance putting it all out there in this recording. I mean, to be a fly on the wall in that session, wow. Take care. 
Steve Perry and Neil Sean have a great passion for classic rhythm and blues and the sounds of Motown. That passion was key to the development of the Journey sound, a pleading urgency projected with heavier full band rock musicianship. Separate Ways was crafted as a rock version of uh, one of those Holland Dozier Holland classics uh, of the Motown era, really. In addition to Sean's inspired guitar licks, his fellow divorcee, Ross Valerie, was an integral in the development of Separate Ways. Uh, Valerie's signature move was to mimic the lower notes in Neil Sean's guitar lead over a four string bass groove. He had the freedom to move around the neck of the instrument to reinforce the, the foundation of the track. The Sean Valerie combo gave Separate Ways uh, the driving beat the band was striving for. It was the perfect first single from the band's new album, Frontiers, and a perfect follow-up to the mega blockbuster album, Escape, uh, which had transformed the band into a multi-platinum juggernaut. Don't stop How could any band follow up one of the biggest records of the early 80s? You know, with Escape, which had three top 10 hits, including Don't Stop Believin', Who's Crying Now, and their biggest hit to date, Open Arms. Well, they actually pulled it off with Frontiers, with one of their biggest rockers, Separate Ways, Worlds Apart, and then the blockbuster power ballad, Faithfully. Faithfully. Frontiers would go on to sell over 6 million copies in America alone. Just two perfect albums back to back. And by the time Separate Ways was released in January of 83, MTV was already a dominant force in determining uh, the success of any single, really. Everybody watched music videos and MTV. Uh, the band members of Journey were not really comfortable with the idea of doing a music video, but they acquiesced, uh, kicking and screaming, really. Their worst fears became a reality when they reluctantly agreed to follow video direction from Tom Buckholtz. Um, Buckholtz's concept for the Separate Ways video was for the five members of Journey to pretend to play their instruments on uh, the fishing wharf in New Orleans. Uh, it went down in infamy as the first ever air band video. Steve Perry had cut his long hair right before the shoot, and he encountered some drama when he brought his girlfriend, Sherry Swafford, on the set of the shoot. Yeah, that's who he wrote Oh Sherry about. The video included a local model named Margaret Olmsted, to you know, be Steve's love interest for the treatment. According to Jonathan Kane, Sherry became very possessive and jealous of another girl playing the part, and she screamed her disapproval at Perry. Uh, it was just another embarrassing part of the whole Separate Ways video experience for the band. The video did get heavy play on MTV, which was the objective. But the band caught a lot of flack from hardcore fans and their peers because it was so bad. I mean, it's ultra bad. So bad it's good and goes back to being bad. In the book, I Want My MTV, Jonathan Kane commented that he was at a loss for words about the music video for Separate Ways. He says he'll never live down uh, playing air keyboards on that clip. None of them will live that down. Kane added that no matter what he does in his career, sooner or later someone will ask him about the Separate Ways video, of course. If you haven't seen the, the musicless video of this, that's on YouTube, and uh, it's so good. <laughs> Separate Ways, Worlds Apart was the lead single from Frontiers. Like I said, it rose to number eight on the Billboard Hot 100, and it lived at the top of the Top Rock Tracks chart in 83, one of the biggest rock songs of the year. In 2022, the song was reimagined with a remix that was produced by Bryce Miller and Steve Perry for the ending of season four of the popular Netflix series, Stranger Things. Similar to the rejuvenation of Running Up That Hill by Kate Bush, when it was prominently integrated into the plot of Stranger Things, and played a lot. 
Now! The remix for Separate Ways captured the excitement of a new generation when it was chosen as the soundtrack to really set up a climactic battle scene in the Papa episode uh, from season four. And they use it in the trailer to introduce the season. In the remix, composer Bryce Miller removed the synth line and the guitar and isolated Steve Perry's vocal, giving the song a really eerie, mysterious darkness, with Perry's vocal manifesting a deep sadness that he didn't know was there until he heard Miller's remix. Perry, who's a big fan of Stranger Things, enthusiastically signed off on Miller's remix, stating that he was blown away by what Miller had done. For Steve, the, the placement of the remix in Stranger Things gave the song really new context, perhaps even a new meaning. Great thing about music. The decision to introduce the foreboding remix of Separate Ways, Worlds Apart was an insightful strategy by Bobby Gum, the head of music at Trailer Park. Uh, the suggestion to use Journey Separate Ways for the series uh, for the trailer, actually, that originated with editor Adam Finkelstein. Uh, he had a gut feel that the song would have a really great thematic resonance for, uh, for the series. Gum followed his editor's instinct and recognized that the essence of the journey hit is about people going their separate ways, which is precisely what the endearing characters of Stranger Things did at the end of season three, if you remember. Even the characters that remained in the fictitious town of Hawkins, Indiana, went their separate ways running in different circles and, and different cliques. Separate Ways Worlds Apart had another jolt uh, in 2023 when Daughtry uh, covered the song, featured a vocal collaboration with the great Lizzie Hell. The Daughtry Hell remake is generating significant airplay in rock radio stations around the U.S as we speak. Journey Separate Ways, Worlds Apart is a superb example of how a great song with lyrical substance is timeless and can be relevant and impactful in pop culture really from generation to generation. I had the chance to ask Journey founder and the guitarist Neil Sean about this period of time with Separate Ways, Worlds Apart and the Frontiers album in general. And uh, we went into some detail about it. Here's what he said. You probably just were, were so happy to take a bite out of it, man, because it's that rock. I loved it. I loved it because it was kind of like rock Motown. It was, you know, our, I, I love the Motown thing. And, you know, I love the soul thing always. You know, I always loved that, whether it was, you know, you know, when I played with Larry Graham and early Sly stuff, or you know, uh, Bobby Womack, I loved you mm -hmm. know in the early days, and and just I, I like the R&B thing, you know, uh, even though I didn't get a chance to play a lot of it, I can play it, you know. That was a song that the MTV, you guys, the video was so big. Where did that? It that... got so big because it was so bad. <laughs> <laughs> It was like one of your original $3,000 videos. <laughs> I forget what we spent on that video, but it was really ridiculously cheap, and that's why it looks so cheesy. It was that, you know. It was a Steve Perry black and oh, checkered. Man. man, it's like M muscle all shirt. All those videos that they kept trying to do these videos with a theme to it, where everybody's playing a part or acting. They were all cheese, man. Just terrible. That's where the band lived. Yeah. It was like live. It, there was nothing cheesy about it. But you try to stick us in a room and make everybody play a role and act. It was like terrible. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> really bad. Well, tell me real quick about Separate Ways, where that kind of came about and how you put that together because the guitar is such a huge... You know what? I wished I had... I wish I could tell you a great story like... I brought this in and it was all me, <laughs> right. but really it, I had nothing to do with it. You know, actually John hummed me the melody 
because he he had the song. He had musically, he had the whole song. Yeah. You know, they, him and Perry were writing it backstage um, while we were on tour, and they were sitting there playing it. And and then you know he goes, well, here's a guitar solo, and I go, so what do you want me to play? And so he he hummed me that melody, and then I just played off it. You know, can you play a little bit of it for us right now? Sure. <laughs> yeah, it's different for guitar. I see guys uh, from from you know bands that are that are out there playing our stuff, tribute bands, and I see them play it all different ways, as well as "Don't Stop Leaving." I'm laughing because they're actually making it harder than it is. <laughs> <laughs> So Journey Separate Ways, Worlds Apart actually spent five consecutive weeks stuck at number eight in the spring of 83. I mean, in almost any other week in any other year, it probably would have been a number one hit you know, on the charts, but it hit smack dab in the middle of what might have been the most competitive period in the history of music, the 80s, or really 83 at that point. Billie Jean by Michael Jackson was at number one in a frenzy that hadn't been seen since Beatlemania. What's more, it was in the middle of Duran Duran's reign of Hungry Like the Wolf. And I'm hungry like the wolf. Beat It was also in the top 10 at that point. Culture Club with Do You Really Want to Hurt Me and Sticks with Mr. Roboto. just wasn't meant to be, but it's definitely number one in our hearts. One of the most compelling rockers ever recorded. It's just so good. Jonathan Cain and Steve Perry were initially inspired to write a song that reflected the, the emotional trauma that their bandmates were struggling with at the time. They manifested hope for a new beginning, you know, to, to break the chains that bind you so that you'll have the freedom to find a, a grander level of love and happiness. Perhaps a place you wouldn't find unless you went your separate ways. I tell you, life lessons one can only learn from a Journey classic. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Leave us a comment about Journey and this classic rock standard. What are your memories of this song? Do you, have you ever experienced it in concert? I mean, it just shakes the stadium. It's just so good. Did you ever see Steve Perry and, and the band and, and Neil Sean and, and all of them together perform it at their peak? Let us know in the comments. Let's have a great discussion. 50th anniversary of Journey, man. One of the greatest bands ever. One of my favorites for sure. If you like our content, uh, subscribe below. We'd love to have you as, as part of our community to talk about the greatest songs of all time. Until next time, three chords and the truth.